the guy that dropped it off said it's the junkiest chainsaw that ever came into the dump. Really? But your opinion's not the same? No. <laughs> you look like a bad saw to me. No. I brought you a four-stroke weed whacker. And oh, a two cool. stroke. Two stroke was an accident. I thought they were both four stroke. What's this what's the story behind it? Never ran right for him. Cool. So we he said it was the junkiest chainsaw ever. <laughs> I don't think it's like a Home Depot saw either, right? It's more of a, no, a superior saw in Manchester. Yeah. They're good saws. Yeah. I have a couple like that. Just gotta figure out why he figures it was a jumpy saw. I thought you would like those lights. I thought oh, those, those are cool. Would look cool on one of Ah, those are awesome. Lights. Yeah. That looks like uh, the movie 1984. The, uh, <laughs> we come and talk to you. <laughs> what are you doing? Is there two of those? Oh, there's more. I think there's like four or six. Awesome. Ones. Those are neat. I like those. Yeah. I said, I know who'd like those. Yeah, that's my favorite so far. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Hey guys, how's it going? So I haven't even opened the box other than the little peek we did before. So let's go get a better idea of what we have. What do you call it? The junky, junkiest chainsaw ever made? Or you ever used? Definitely looks like the blade's been overheated. It's burnt all down below there. It definitely took the bar out. Yeah, it's probably jumping the chain. The chain's not even sitting straight on the on the back side, it's leaning to one side. Let's give her a couple of tugs. See what we get. Feel the compression. That part feels pretty good. Let's go get her uh, up in the vise. We'll clamp down on the bar and get into it. See if we can find out either what happened to it, where it doesn't run anymore and turn it into a piece of junk, or if we can revive it and repair whatever it needs. Let's go pop that top cover off. I think it's got a broken mount for the handlebar. Is that what you call it? And I would think the bar is burned up or lack of oil, possibly maybe the oiler does not work, or again, you don't know what people's capacity is when they run this stuff. And you could add a homeowner that put regular gas in it, never put any uh, chain oil. I had a saw I sold, as a matter of fact, now I'm saying that. Should grab the Phillips. I had a saw that I did, it was a nice saw, I was trying to think of what the name of it was. But it was, I think it was a John Surrett, is that how you pronounce it? And I sold it to a friend and he brought it back and it was all burned up. The bar just like that, worse. It keeps stalling out and I go and, and brought it back. And I go, did you ever put any chain oil in it? He looked at me kind of funny. So that was a no. And that's what the problem is with that one. All right, let's go. There should be an air, air filter cartridge. Go right on that. It doesn't look terribly dirty. It doesn't look like it's got a bunch of crap in it. Somebody possibly went and cleaned it out. Let's. We'll get the plug out of it and then we'll probably dump the fuel out next. I want to see if it looks like it's burnt up though. It's going to look, sometimes you can tell by looking at the side of the cylinder whether it's cooked or not. It doesn't look too bad. It looked like it was overheated. Yeah, let's go pop that plug out first. We'll take a look down the jug and see if we see any beat upness of the uh, cylinder. Yeah, let's go pop that out. It actually looks brand new. Yeah, plug's pretty new. Dry, too. Let's take a peek down the hole. It's, it's 
clean. Let's go turn it to bottom dead center. Where's the pull start? The piston all the way down. I see some scoring on the cylinder wall. It looked terrible. There's some scoring. Let me get you over there. You can see them back there. Yeah, a little terrible, but it definitely looks like it's ran a little malnourished for two stroke oil. There's some more in that one right there. Let's go get a little container. We'll dump the fuel out. If there's any fuel in it, we'll see what that looks like. Sometimes they dump them out when they go to a dump too because they don't want any fuel. Let's see if we get anything now. It's bone dry. Take a look down inside there. Looks pretty clean and the filter actually has a blue tinge to it like it's had two stroke oil in it. It's really clean in there. What do you think we got for oil? Let me get an air gun and we'll blow that crap off first and we'll try to do the same with the oil. Not sure what the trigger needs to be. Let's just give it a shot first, see if we get anything. It might be grounded out already. Nothing. Let's go. That's probably that's probably a run position right there. I got spark. Right. Feels a little. With no plug in it. Feels a little on the draggy side. I'm gonna go take a little bit of two-stroke oil and dribble it in there just to kind of lubricate the jug. It just seems very dry. And uh, spin it over a couple times to see if that improves things. You know, you're a little bit. Of... Let go around. About the same. Nah. What do you say? We get a little bit of fuel. We'll dribble it in there. We'll give her a yank over with the plug. I'm gonna blow this crap off first. We'll throw it a plug in there. Throw fuel in there, and put the plug in. Give it a yank and see if she goes ring and dies. Find a happy spot for that. She doesn't bind. Alright. Let's go back over here. Actually, let's just put it right down the carb. The part about dribbling it into the carb is you get a little bit of that two stroke oil on the crank side of things. Generally, they'll hold up, it's not much of an issue. I wouldn't keep running it by putting it through the plug because you're only lubricating the top end. Got to give it some of that. I think we, our spark is on. Let's go give her, see if she'll go. <laughs> it's making noise. <laughs> okay, ready? Well, there you go. She'll run. <laughs> Seem to rev kind of high for me not being on the throttle though. That's the choke side of things. That seems to be functioning okay. I don't think the throttle works. That makes for a fun saw. It just runs wide open all the time. Yeah, we should be having this linkage right here should be moving. It's not. Looks like it's broken off the handle. That might have been the last straw. That's right out of there. It's not even locked into where it should be. That's supposed to be tapped into there. Can we get it without taking it apart? 
Let me go see if we can get that into play. We not even have to take the carver apart, but that's definitely going to be an issue right there because it's going to make it hard to start. Hard to cut wood too. Let's see if we can get that back into place without damaging anything. I wonder if, because of all the hand, the flex that's on the that handle, if it just popped out of there. And I wonder, and more throttle. Let's go see if we have, it just seems like, normally there's some dampening because you don't want your hands getting vibrated like crazy. So that there's some cushioning built into it. It just seems fairly extreme on this that it's able to move around so much. And that's why it popped out. It's got a spring on the upper. It's got a spring on the upper right here. Which I don't know if you're supposed to have a mount going right across. Like a piece of rubber or something on the inside. Let's go flip her over. Take a look at the bottom end. See if there's anything happening down below here that's busted. Let's see what we got going on. Doesn't it seem like there should be some kind of bushing, more bushings inside of here? It seems like that's got an awful lot of movement to go hit those rubber legs. Like they actually might have fit into something. Hmm. Yeah, just all that throttle. That's what caused that throttle to, to pop out. It's probably, you know, cutting into a, to a, a log and the throttle popped right out. And it just stayed full throttle. <laughs> <laughs> that was the last straw because that's what we found. You know, something was up with that. Hmm. Somehow we got to be able to control that. Either that or that linkage is maybe so bent on the other end from getting jammed that it will pop back out of there. I don't know. You want to get some more covers off of it? I kind of want to leave the blade on it for a little bit because it allows us to keep it in the vise and have a little support. Maybe there's an exploded view inside one of these. Yeah. No parts manual though, huh? The only thing it shows is make sure the dampening units are securely attached to the engine and the handlebars. It just shows pictures of two types. It doesn't show the ones that are, my, I, I would probably call it like over travel having all that gap around there. That may be just the way it is and you know possibly these are on the weak side. But right off the bat it just seemed like it moved way too much. Maybe I'm missing one. Let's go. That one might be broke right there. Might not be attached. It doesn't feel like it's moving with the sorry. That inside one doesn't look like it's connected to anything. That would do it. That's the closest one to the throttle, too. Yeah, so it would be that one. The one with the screw head ripped out of it. That would do it. I'll figure out the best way to get in there without having to take too much stuff apart. Did it rip the hole right out? Let's go see. It's got a, a spot right there. I would think it would probably be like a square nut. What's the other one look like? Right there. That one's just bolted right into the head. Let's go find out what happened with that one. Well, I wish whatever this corner was would come right out of the way, but I have a feeling it's, that's probably part of the main body of it. So getting to the backside of the other screw might be a little bit of a challenge. Let's go see what happens when we end. To get it out of there at least. Maybe what we can do is get the pull start out of our way and we might have enough room to snake it that way. Hmm. 
We could probably undo the other mounts too, give us a little bit of room. See if we can not damage anything, but get a little bit of access there. Get it out, at least see if there's any, that's some breaking plastic. <laughs> see if there's any broken plastic in the back. Let me uh, put that gas cap back in there for support. Get something a little better to pry with. see what we have so it just looks like it unworked it so I don't know how you would can you get through the center of that to hold the screw from turning I'm sure the nuts are long gone so how are we gonna get to the access this side of it be able to tighten it up you could probably look at wasn't there another spring one on it where was that one up front there Yeah, that, one, that one's just threaded right in. So it must be able to access, must be able to fit right through the center. Yeah. Well, no matter what, we got to get there, right? So let's start taking some stuff out of our way. We need to be able to get to... Maybe even just threads right in to the plastic. I'm looking down. I don't know if you can see. There's the light. Right, right there. I don't know if that threads into the plastic or they had some kind of like a weird offset nut. See that half half round circle that's offset? Let's get this handle out of our way. What else is holding that whole handle? We got that throttle. The fuel tank is on this side. And we got this one. I think if we get this one out of here, maybe this whole assembly will be able to pop out. That's got to go too. It's just, that's just a break on the handle popping on. I can go dig some hardware out of the way. I think I'll, I'll save you that project part of it. And I'll bring you back when we find something. Let's get that pole start out of our way. Dirty, but not bad. What's that? It's like I sucked up a piece of rope or something in the center. <laughs> Must have been a redhead. All right, so we got some kind of pin right there. I don't know what that is. Is that another bushing that's supposed to be there? It's not there. What would that be? All right? It kind of looks like it should be something, doesn't it? Let's get the wires up out of the way. Go a little deeper. Yeah, it looks like some kind of bushing was also in there too. That's that's gone. Probably when the other one popped out, it lost that one. We could look it up online, but that's making it way too easy, isn't it? <laughs> Rather do the forensics and see what we can find. All right, so we need that one, and if that was lined up, eh, it's not in the center. If that was in the center, it's hard to say. What about, is there anything on the back cover that makes like a, because something would have held that in, right? 
Would that black cover have held it in? Just trying to see if there was a mark from something, a little tell. So it would have been just partially right on the edge. Do you see anything on the edge right there? See that little that little detent? Does that line up to it? No. It's right, off the, right off the very edge of it. There is some kind of dirt mark right there. All right, we still have to go figure out whether we can thread that one back together again. And we have fuel lines going to be holding us and this one. I could probably peek down in there right now and just see if there's any threads. Yeah, there's threads in there. They look a little chewed up, but there is threads in there. So, would we be able to get an Allen wrench down through the center of that? That's probably how you would have to tighten it. Yeah. So we can get that one back together. I could actually wiggle that back in there, screw that back down, if it'll hold, and then put the screw back in on the top without disassembling it any further. I'm gonna go see if I can find an exploded view and see if we are missing something from that locating pin. It just seems like, you know, what else would the purpose be? I, I wouldn't think you would have a metal pin just kind of banging on plastic for the stop, right? But that's just, we're just guessing. part of the trigger or anything is it the the pivot pin does it hold is it holding anything can't see Got a tag on it i think that's the date 113 of 2000 so the saw is eh, 20 years old being feeding all right so we're going to go try putting a couple of pieces back together i'm going to see if that spring assembly will thread itself back into the plastic down there without ripping out. And hopefully it does. If not, we're going to have to do a, some kind of operation to go about fixing that, huh? See so what we get. I'd be able to get the screw to come upward. Yeah, please. Hope you can fish through there and see if we can get that to start. We got something. Yeah, it's feeling like it's ripped out though. threads that's why it did what it did and what do we got to do to kind of cure that though huh yeah the screw will go back and lock it in place but that's not going to hold up it's going to rip out of that plastic again so you got to figure out some kind of way that we can get that to uh, bond together well, I think we're going to need to get this assembly away so we can get to where those threads are that are stripped and the only way we're going to do that is to operate a little bit more. So we got the front spring loaded one. What I'm thinking is maybe we can go to like a, let's say we want to call it imperial standard thread. And see if um, we can kind of self tap it into it, into the plastic. Either that, I, I'm wondering if possibly maybe we could heat like a screw up and run it down into the threads and, and let it cool off and kind of like make it, make its own threads. I don't know, how do you, 
How do you fix a hole in plastic threads when it goes away? Metal? Metal, I got it. Plastic might be a different situation. Might also find that there's a crack or something next to the housing too that's just causing it to, to slip out. I know we still got fuel lines hooking this up too, so. Yeah, let's see if that'll open up for us. Yep. I was already out once before, it should pop out again, right? I know the fuel lines are still connected to it too. So we need, let's drop something. Lift your foot. There you go. Rubber, rubber bushing. We need to access that hole and they get something to thread into it that will hold. I'm gonna go blow that out with some air, some cleaning fluid. Let's go take a check and see what's happening down there. Make sure it's salvageable of some sort. You might probably just get a bigger screw maybe, huh? It's a good problem is we gotta need something that we can get through there. Plus we gotta be able to get in there. Is that thread out of there? Yeah, maybe the next difficult thing is how do we get that apart without breaking that? It looks okay. I don't see I don't see any cracks or anything in the plastic. But it has threads further down. I we're probably only catching that first I don't know, four or five rows. And it looks like it continues down. So we possibly either we get a longer screw or you know just go from metric to standard and get one in there. But the next thing is we have to be able to have access to it. So let's see if we can get this apart. Get this to thread out of here. We can change the screw that's in the middle of that. I want to dig a hole and make things worse than what we got, right? Come on, go. This cracks right off the end of it. Is the whole thing turning on us, or is it turning? That's just the whole spring turning on us. Crank down a little bit more. The thing about a spring, if you uncoil it, it will get larger. Possibly release. I don't know if it's pressed in there, though. It would be my guess they pressed it in there. I don't see that happening without damaging it. Try a little bit more. Because as you want to twist it, it should open up and get, you know, as you turn the spring backwards, it, it, it should get larger as you do that. Going this direction, it should tighten down on it. Okay, well, I'm going to work on that. I see a little bit of a gap that opened up. Right there, I think it was against it, and then it popped back, back just a little. Let me see if I can work on that, get that out of there. I'm gonna try rotating that spring. Let's see, so that would make the spring fatter, and then see if it gives it enough room where it'll turn to center. There it goes. Ha! Kind of like Chinese fingers, in a way. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, let's thread it onto there. Cool. Now we can do something with that part of it. Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can get a screw that can bite either further down or a larger diameter and fix that. And off to the land of hardware because we're going to need one of those. An Allen wrench setup that'll fit down in there. Hopefully, is is standard larger than metric? Kind of looking like the same thing almost, huh? It's gonna suck if it's not, because then the next size up is what? It's gonna be that diameter. That's gonna be quite a bit to try to step up. Let's see what, try, we'll try threading. Let's go with something long for now. Try threading one of those in here, see how it does. Those that don't know what Allen packs. Red's metric, yellow's standard or American. SAE. 
let's see what kind of luck we can get by tapping one of these in there. See if that'll hold. Probably could have put it on a caliper too and just let's see if it's a little bit larger. I thought it was. I might be able to get it with one of those. Probably cut some new threads. Bottom out. And bottom out, then we'll measure off of that how much is left, and we'll know how long of a screw to put in there. And then from there, we can uh, cut one just so it'll have full length. So we'll get the most bite. I think that's it right there. So I'm going to go eyeball down the side of that. I'm going to count how many threads are there and uh, reduce that from the screw minus whatever it takes for that seating. We probably could leave another one or two threads for that depth of that, that last spring that's on there. Go measure that up. Two thirty five ish. Two forty seven. Well, not much bigger, but enough. Bet you a couple of you yelling at me use a T handle right now. I do not have them here at the time. What I do have is this. You can drop an Allen wrench in it, pull cover over it, kind of turns it into a T-handle. That makes life a little easier. I'm going to call that Max right there. So you can reassemble that now. Drop that down. Now this should actually fully go in fairly easy because the springs don't want to open. I had it backwards before in my thought process. But that should be able to run right down until it stops. There you go. And get it back together. Let's go put that in there and see if it'll lock down tight for us. Yeah, we're going in. Should have enough room to work with it. Out of its socket, so to speak. See if you can get it like that. What I'll do is I'll tighten it right down. We'll see if it tightens up and then I'll back it off and we'll put it back in its socket up top. Do the last crank. Come on. There we go. See if that's tight. Yeah, it's not turning. Okay, I'm gonna go crack that loose. Just so it can rotate however it wants to fit up inside there. We'll put that back together. I'll put the, all the other bits and pieces and snubbers and everything back in and we'll see where we are from there. We're getting closer though. I bet you that was the major issue that I had. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> so I was in the process of putting it back together and I went to go tighten down that front one that I took out. That one was loose too. I'm just going to strip out, but let's go see if we can get it to go tight because the spring was spinning. All right. At least that one didn't rip out. So the handle still comes across, grabs here, and grabs onto this one yet, yeah, but already it feels much better on the throttle. It doesn't have as much movement as it did before. Before it was all over the place. Well, obviously the one closest to it wasn't doing anything. So we got that one and some play taken out of the front one. I'm going to go blow out this all a little bit. We'll get some of this crap out of here and maybe we'll get the covers back on it. And uh, I don't know, maybe we actually put some gas in. We'll fire it up, see if the carb's okay, and just kind of go from there. So I'm going to go... Just undo what we did, clean her up, put the other support back in the handle, and then probably gotta look into that oiler would be the next thing, that's if that runs.
no screws left over, so it should be close. That is much better than what we had before. That thing was jumping around all over. Now the throttle does what it should. Make sure everything else is operating okay. Let's just shut off. I think we're to the point we'll tighten the plug up. We'll throw some gas back in that tank. We'll try to fire it up and see how it is functionality-wise if there's any issues with the uh, the engine and the carbon and the idle. And then from there, we'll go a little bit further. I'll leave that top cover off for now. We can't run it forever because that's the cooling part of it. Uh, sucks air in through here from the fan. Blows it across the cylinder and exits out the other side. But you can run it for a couple minutes. Let's get some non-ethanol. Two stroke gas, and this is 50 to 1. That should be more than enough. Yeah, a little more. I don't, does this thing have a primer bulb on it? I didn't see one. I don't remember seeing one. We might as well put that two stroke oil back in too, right? Not two stroke oil, the uh, barn chain oil. Let's we'll dump that in while we're at it. It does look like it's pretty full. I don't see any crap in there. We'll just make sure the last little bit of shmangum on the bottom of the cup doesn't go in. I'll leave it at that. Not just for undercoating. You can actually use it on a chainsaw too. So let's go fire it up. Let's see what we get. Like I was saying, it's got a primer bulb. It's got, I think it's got a decompression valve. Might be able to. Kind of primer a little bit. Choke. We're up off that. Let's see. If she'll go. Is that a locking throttle for higher RPM? No, it'll turn the choke off. Okay. Let me get in there. Let's go to the choke again. I don't think it has any car problems and the oiler is working. I think we're gonna have to go get into that. I think whoever just ran it, ran it out of oil and kind of burned up that blade somewhat. Let's go pull that other side apart anyway. I'm gonna go clean up where the clutch is. Let's go pop this off. Look inside, see if there's any issues with it. Take a good look at the bar. See if uh, we need to flip it over or use another one or whatever we can do to get by with that. It looks a little kitty wampus on me on that, that bottom edge, but we'll take a look. Don't mind the fan noise in the background. Airing us out a little bit. Let's see what we got. Come on, fingers. I know one thing a lot of people don't do, I think you're supposed to, is uh, it's like every other blade sharpening, every, 
every so often you're supposed to take the bar and flip it over and people think that the writing is on the bar that it has just one direction that it stays no that's not true and i'll prove that to you because it has an oiler hole that is on both sides of the bar watch this one not have it <laughs> So that's why it has the, the twin set of holes that you can flip it over and run it the other way and then it'll cause more wear damage on the other side. You're kind of evening that out where this side looks pretty baked. That definitely got hot there, huh? That got cooked. I would say just run with no oil. I'm going to go look and see if that is flat. Let's, just go get it. Let's eyeball it real quick. I don't see a bend to it. Still turns. I'm gonna go wash that up, and I think we need to douche out the. Ah. I'm gonna douche out all this crap too. Get that out of there and get it cleaned up. We already know the oiler is working. Sometimes what happens, the oil will fail where you fill it up with oil and it just continues to drip afterwards. I don't see that being the case with this saw though, because the, the box that it was in was dry and the uh, oiler was full. I think the oiler is fine. I'm not going to bother taking that apart. I'm just going to blow this stuff out. Clutch. So you spin it backwards. It drives this way to take the clutch off. You would run it backwards and it would pop itself off. You stick like a, a spark, a uh, piece of um, rope in the spark plug hole and you can pop it backwards and take it off. I'm not seeing an issue with that neither. What happens is as the engine revs up, these push outward and catch the outer shell. And if you stall it in a piece of lumber or bind it, whatever, this will try to drive it, but it will slip and uh, your forgiveness factor. And then at an idle, the weights go back in and the chain doesn't turn at all. But it's RPM related. The uh, centrifugal force pushing these weights out, make a contact the outer shell. The outer shell drives the sprocket and the sprocket runs the chain. You go wash that up and uh, clean that bar up. Yeah, it's cleaned off. You can probably see it a little bit better. So this is the passage for the oiler. Where the oil comes out and it goes into the bar. And on the bar, you can see now the bar is cleaned. You can see an oil passage there and you know, this will be bolted up there. There's the one on the other side. And this is just the locating pin or the tension pin that uh, it holds on to, which allows you to adjust the tension of the belt back and forth. Sometimes they get dirty, they get clogged, and the oiler will not work. That's not the case on this one. And then on um, this one for the adjustment, it's actually kind of cool. Sometimes you have to come through the front of the saw and you work here to work the adjuster. This one's right in the center of it. It just turns the cam back and forth. We're adjusting the blade like that. All right, I'm gonna go pop that back on and uh, put it back together. So I was cleaning up the cover on the other side and uh, I was looking to go wash this stuff off. Well, this stuff doesn't really wash off. It's actually burned into the cover. And I don't know if there just a bunch of debris got on here or the clutch actually spun itself off and kind of crashed into the uh, outer edge there at some point. Took out some, uh, took out some of the metal, some of the aluminum, and ground it. It could be just a bunch of crap was in there too. It's hard to say, but any of this stuff could have walked its way out. These I think are just sitting in there with uh, tension. I don't think there's anything that really kind of holds um, the clips in. Possibly maybe they came up and rubbed against it. As far as the brake on the handle, so this right here locks into this, and if you pop the handle forward it shortens this band, this band, this circle gets smaller and it tightens around the outside of the drum and that's what stalls the uh, chain from moving. And I believe it's a safety slash if you're doing something with the saw and you're walking with it or something, you can actually pop it on too so that inadvertently if you hit the throttle, the, the blade doesn't move. But most of the time it's when the saw kicks back, when it kicks back, you're holding it here, it kicks back, your hand hits it and pushes the lever forward 
hitting it also so it doesn't smash you in the face and cut your face in half. <laughs> and now let me get it back together. We got all back together let's give her one last yahoo function wise let's run let's try it no gas let's just give her a pull Well, there you go. You thought it was going to have to have a carburetor clean, didn't you? <laughs> it wasn't going to be the only thing wrong with it. I did too. That's a little different. So the whole saw was fixed for free, except for one bad screw. And it kind of just cascaded and caused a bunch of different problems. Probably the last thing was the throttle sticking wide open and it just gave up on it at that point. I'll probably keep an eye out for a bar. I actually think that one will be okay for a while. So we cut some wood, really don't know. And I do not have my sharpener with me, although they do not look terribly dull. That looks pretty decent. And oil it looks like it's might be putting a little too much out until you run it for, you know, a couple of gas tanks, get an idea of what you're doing. A little hard to tell though. So how's that, huh? Not bad for a little bit of work. And our only problem was that stripping out of the plastic. <laughs> All right, guys, with that, thanks for hanging out with me and having a little bit of fun and uh, bringing back together some uh, scrapyard saves for uh, next to nothing, actually nothing. So with that, I'll see you soon. Later. Yeah, go for it. It's definitely a cold, cold start because it was 19 degrees last night and that thing was sitting outside. It's a cold start and it's 19 degrees and I'm handicapped. Okay. <laughs> No it has button? no it's got a okay i got it on switch yeah it's up came up with the choke <laughs> yep and you give her a couple of yanks and then the choke shuts off when maybe there you go <laughs>
thoughts on the junkiest chainsaw they ever made? That's what they called it. I'd say this one is, I mean, leave it here. <laughs> <laughs> What's my thoughts, sir? Leave it here. <laughs> well, all right. That was good for uh, being right out of the pocket cold, too. Yeah, I think, cool. it, uh, I think it does just fine. Awesome.